Hello, uh, well, what uh, interesting times we find ourselves in. Um, I'm still a bit ragged from not having slept much through Thursday night. Um, to complicate things, I caught a cold that day, so um, slightly recovering. Anyway, uh, perhaps in as a salute to the glorious age of statesmanship and integrity in public life that we've just gone through. Maybe I'll do a, um, a solemn salute to 72 virgins in recognition of the... Um, no, actually, no, I'm joking. I'm not going to do that. I don't have this feeling like it's 1997, partly because I'm 25 or whatever it is, years old, no, more years older than I was then. Also, I didn't have a cold at that time, I don't think. But still, I mean, I don't really have the feeling we were entering that perhaps we're not entering this transformative new age. But I do feel like a bad smell has... Um, alleviated somewhat anyway so of um my first first acquisition of this whatever this new era is not not a huge haul but i was out in um northwest london there was one of those little outdoor community events going on today with you know, the, the various stalls you get at those there wasn't a lot in the book front on the book front but i did pick up uh, this. I'd never heard of this before. It came out, actually, coincidentally, this is a 1997 issue, I think originally published in 96. Uh, Stephen Lowe's book in his dad's memory. I kind of got a little way into this already. I had a little read, a couple of chapters when I got in. He kind of seems to be kind of reconstructing what he can of um, Arthur Lowe's history. I mean, there seems to be a little bit of personal, I don't know how I'd put it, person dealing with stuff, maybe. I don't get the feeling from what I've read so far. I, think I get the feeling perhaps he didn't know his dad as well as he might have, perhaps. Is that fair to say? Anyone that's read this? I don't know. We'll find out more um, as I go into it. But... You know, whether or not you're a fan of Dad's Army. I mean, I think if you're my sort of age, most... I don't know how this works for women. Most most men my age, to some extent, have fond memories of, of Dad's Army as a comedy. It's, it's uh, you know, not to get into that over-enhanced nostalgia about, uh, oh, they don't make comedy like that. Well, of course they don't, you know. But, you know, it, it is... It, one of the, I suppose, landmark British comedy series that has borne repetition over the years. Now, around the t coincidentally, around the time that, or just before the publication of this, I suppose it would have been, I did have the privilege of meeting another uh, luminary of this series, uh, Clive Dunn. Um, I did meet a few times, so it was day job stuff back then um now i believe the two of them didn't get on it sort of hooks us up with kind of recent current events i suppose that i think between low and dunn there was political friction now clive dunn i think it had a bit of an interesting journey in his um political development from what i remember he did he had had a very brief 1930s flirtation with bit awkward in retrospect with with the Mosley lot I think he backed out of that quite quickly I think when the scales fell from his eyes about the true nature of them well you know maybe there's a lesson for us in in the contemporary landscape on that front but I believe by uh, by the time he'd come through his wartime experiences done was uh, fairly uh, on the left wing side of the spectrum where low I suppose as you might associate with mannering maybe that low was of a sort of conservative nature and that there was a certain amount of friction between them on set i gather i have to say dunn was lovely actually he was he was he struck me as sometimes when you meet celebrities and their guard is down or they think you're just some gopher or whatever and you know some lowly person in um a day job as i certainly was at that time you find out about people by the way they behave towards you and 
as people in the public eye sometimes you know have different faces and sometimes when you see people when they think they don't need to have their public front up they're assholes some of them and Dunn wasn't he was very sweet and he um gave me the time of day and um he was kind of what you'd want him to be really I remember him very fondly from the few meetings I had with he was a funny bloke nice nice chap anyway yeah I don't, I don't have a lot of background info on low particularly other than sort of rather layman stuff but this looks quite interesting anyway i'm going to try and keep this brief and not jabber on to it partly because well they've killed my views again i don't know what what youtube are doing this year it's kind of i started the year with a views death i got this slight kind of remission of that in March, April, suddenly it sort of got healthy again and my usual star performers went back to their usual. Since about May, they've just killed me again. I'm just dead in the water on views. But I imagine a few of you are going through this. and So forgive me if I'm just going to sort of, pardon the expression, crank one out. Um, I mentioned this in a previous video, but I'd left my copy of it at my parents' house and I've since been back and picked this up and I've got this look at that I'm this far through it I've done pretty well very readable actually uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about this now because it might, probably deserves better than me just blurting out half formed impressions from my first reading of it but very readable book you know on that yeah, yeah there's there's a huge variation in quality on, on books about this subject matter and this one's actually I mean, not that I suppose in the 50s this was written uh, treats the subject you know sort of grown up sort of way i suppose but anyway other than that not a second world war book although the um the author has did touch on that area too uh, over his career i think um alone in berlin is the other one i've read which i believe was filmed still not seen the film but this one iron gustav which if you're a sort of pulp hound of my vintage, you might recognise that nickname from the Sven Hassel series. Now, that, that's what I always... As far as I knew, until I picked this up, Iron Gustav was this villain in the Sven Hassel books. You never actually met him. You only heard these anecdotes about him. Various people in the Sven Hassel books had been through the German military prison system, and the Iron Gustav, I think, was... I forget if he was Torgau or Germersheim or one of those. I'm not even sure if they were military prisons in reality, but in, in, in the Hassel books, these are apparently these brutal penal kind of establishments and Iron Gustav is the kind of in-house bully boy uh, one of these establishments anyway he's, it turns out Iron Gustav isn't that he's uh he's this kind of Prussian martinet he's a, he's, a, he's ex Prussian army this is set I think just at the start or just before the first world war starts he's ex Prussian military but he, you know, he tries to sort of run his family as if it's the barracks or something. So I did pick this up a long time ago and sort of got distracted from sort of getting too far. But I've restarted. Anyways, yeah, and I'm not, I wouldn't put this in a pulp category at all. This is quite, I believe, quite a well-regarded author. And um, what I've read by him so far has been pretty fascinating. So, yes, I'm... Uh, revisiting this or try and get a bit further with it this time anyway i promise not i promise not to ramble on and i won't so uh, thank you again for joining me and i hope we catch up soon bye